Hello there, amazing ACCA Advanced Performance Management students. My name is Steve Willis. In this video, I'm going to help you pass your upcoming APM exam. We are going to look at the difficult topic of economic value added. I'll take you through the basics. We'll look at how it's calculated. We'll do a past exam question together, including looking at the writing skills you need. So friends, without further ado, let's get started. Let's look at the basic concept behind EVA. And to do that, let's start with a review of some principles from business finance. You might remember the concepts behind the present value of a perpetuity. Perpetuity, that's a constant annual cash flow that will repeat into perpetuity or into infinity. Present value, that would be the value of those cash flows today, those future cash flows discounted by some opportunity cost. And you might remember the calculation there is that annual cash flow divided by the discount rate, that would be the reinvestment rate or that opportunity cost of the potential investor. With that basic idea, we can then move on to value just about anything. For example, we could use that principle to determine the value of a company. Let's keep it simple. Let's assume a company with no debt, 100% equity financed. We could say that the value of that company is then that company's free cash flows. Those would be the cash flows from operations, less tax paid, less the annual amount that needs to be reinvested to maintain that asset base discounted to the company's weighted average cost of capital. That would be the opportunity cost of those equity capital providers in this company. Moving on, we can then express the value of this company in a bar chart. This yellow bar, let's say, is that present value of those future free cash flows. If we drill down into this figure, we could say part of the value of the company comes from the market value of their assets. Imagine if the company closed its doors, they went out of business, there's no longer a going concern, the value of the company would then drop to the market value of its assets, right to there. In the 1980s, a brilliant guy named Joel Stern, whose ideas these are, he then said that the difference between the market value of that company and the market value of its assets is a special number that would be represented by this green bar. He went on to say that the green bar represents the present value of the company's economic profits. This idea of economic profit, it's different from accounting profit than you just that you just pull off of a company's P&L. Economic profits, well that would be the operating profit from the P&L adjusted for non-cash and some other items. From this figure of adjusted operating profit, we then subtract the minimum capital requirement of the investors. How much of that profit are the investors expecting? The difference there would be economic profits. What's left over after we've satisfied our investors? And this finally brings us to the concept of economic value added or EVA. EVA in essence is then measuring the change in shareholder value. If EVA is positive, shareholder wealth is increasing. If it's negative, then shareholder wealth is dropping. This brings us to the calculation then of the EVA metric. 
It starts with the company's net operating profit after tax. Well, after tax paid. Tax is a cash flow. OP, operating profit. N, net. Net of the non-cash expenses and some other adjustments. From that, we subtract the company's capital employed or their net assets multiplied by the weighted average cost of capital. In other words, the opportunity cost of these capital providers. That's the minimum return in dollars they would like to see year on year. The difference then is economic value added. If that figure is positive, shareholder value is growing. If that figure is negative, the company is eroding its shareholder value. This means the metric EVA makes a nice KPI to include in the performance contracts of senior management because it will align their operational and their financial management decision making to the creation of shareholder wealth. Now that we've reviewed the concepts behind EVA, let's try a past ACCA APM exam question and look at the calculation of EVA and all of the adjustments in detail. In order to do this, I'd like you to please download the question Stillwater. You can find it in the link below. You can also find it at the link right here. Download this question go through it at home, give it a try. And when you're ready, please go into the ACCA practice platform, open up a blank, a blank spreadsheet, and we'll go through it together. Let's start with a standard template when we are doing an EVA question, and this template will get you out of a lot of trouble. And we have three rows in our standard template. The top line would be no PAT or net operating profit after tax. The second line would be the weighted average cost of capital multiplied by the opening capital employed. And the net of those two lines would be the third line, economic value added, EVA. No problem abbreviating with common abbreviations. The marking team will know what you are talking about. Okay, that's the beginning. And let us take things in the order of easy marks first. And in a heavy EVA question like this, it's usually the whack working that is most straightforward. There's no reason we can't start with weighted average cost of capital. We don't have to take this in a sequential order from top to bottom. So I'll open up a section on whack. The marking team will know exactly what's happening here. And there are two subworkings to get the WAC. The first thing is the after tax cost of debt. And then with that, we can then build the WAC with the ratios of debt and equity and the cost of equity, cost of debt. Okay, so we can start with after tax cost of debt and then do our WAC. Guys, I'm going to double click now on my column separator to auto widen that column. So the after tax cost of debt will be that pre tax interest rate of 5% multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. And we'll do that in the cell B7 using the standard spreadsheet operators to make quick work of this. So the WAC calculation will be the 40% equity multiplied by 0 0.16, 16% cost of equity, plus the 60% times the cost of debt, the after-tax cost of debt in cell B7. Okay. There we have it, spreadsheet making it go nice and easy. And break things out into multiple rows. Yes, we could have combined all of that into one larger equation. However, there is a mark for the after-tax cost of debt. Make it easier for the marker to find that working. And 
the, the more complicated your formula is, the more likely it will have an error. So break things into small pieces whenever possible. It will help the marker. It will ensure you have fewer errors. Let us now move to the notepad working. And this is the busiest part of the question. I will do this line by line rather than building up one big equation where it's likely to make an error where it's likely that I will lose my my train of thought I will just build up a list of items and sum them at the end also making it easier for the marking team to give me marks awarded line by line and I'm looking at the exhibit I've highlighted in the hi highlighter tool during reading and planning and I see the usual suspects there ready for my EVA pleasure. We start with the operating profit as per the financial statements and that's given to us. So we can start with operating profit. We see accounting depreciation. Abbreviations here are totally fine. The marketing team will know what you're talking about. That's the non-cash expense. And we know to take that out, to add that back, and replace that with the change in the market value of the assets, also known as economic depreciation. We see a provision. That's the change in the allowance for doubtful debts, which is also going to be a non-cash item. We see R&D, and we also see further in the notes, we see that this cost has been expensed 100%, but it's for the long-term benefit of the company. So following the principles of EVA, which are intentionally less strict than generally accepted accounting principles, and we will now capitalize this expense, and we would then amortize it in the future when this product were launched and the benefit was starting to be consumed. So we will then capitalize this R&D cost. We see other non-cash. And we see the tax paid rather than the tax charge in the P&L. And then we have one final row to add, everybody. This would be adding back the tax shield on the interest. Because our company has taken on debt, we have interest. Those interest payments reduced our tax. However, for the purpose of EVA, we would like to show the NOPAT line as if it were funded 100% equity. The benefit of the tax shield is in the weighted average cost of capital. That would be that after tax cost of debt. So if we left the tax shield in the NOPAT and we also applied the tax shield in the WAC, that would be double counting. Okay, so there we have all of the lines that we need. And we can now go upstairs and just add those figures from the exhibit. And we can use a quick formula here. That will simply be equal to that negative 23. That's the interest multiplied by 0 0.25. That's the 25%. Okay, and we can use the handy dandy sum function that you know and love to make quick work of this column. Let's throw down an underline we can come up here and just click on the underline symbol to let the user of this spreadsheet know the next line is the total. Guys, I want to remind you at this point, there are no marks for spreadsheet skills. There are no marks for formatting. Most of the items up here we will not need. Mainly, I'm just using the formatting, and I'll show you that later. Okay, the rest of the stuff I rarely use. Okay, working number two completed. Let's now do our final working. That would be the opening capital employed. And we can just do that here to the right. There's no law or rule that says we have to keep going down. Our spreadsheet is wider than it is longer, so it'd be a little bit easier for us to use this 
free space on the right. So we need the adjusted opening capital employed. And what rows do we need? Well, we need to start with 2011 unadjusted, then accounting depreciation and economic depreciation are assumed equal. That's a very nice simplifying assumption that the examiner gave us. We have one non-cash expense to deal with, and then we have to remove the impact of all of the changes in that allowance for doubtful debts. If, and we want to get rid of that. So I will add that back to my opening capital employed. Okay, let me now widen this column. And our opening is 637. Accounting depreciation and economic depreciation are the same, so I can put a zero here. I'm just putting that row there just to make it crystal clear to the markers that I didn't leave something out that I didn't understand. I just want to show them that I understood that. If for some reason there could possibly be some mark for demonstration of that idea, my bases are covered. We have the non-cash expense of the six there. Now, this opening allowance, let me come back to that with a little visual diagram if I can do this. I've sketched a quick timeline here. We are calculating EVA for the end of 2012. So we are calculating no PAT over here. However, we're going to use the opening capital employed, which is the same as the closing for 2011. So we know that the closing allowance in 2012 is 4.5. We know the charge for the year was two. Okay, now using some basic algebra, we can solve for the opening, which would be, okay, 2.5. So the thinking is this, to put the capital employed in the same terms as the net operating profit after tax, we need to adjust for the non-cash expense of the allowance which is 100% non-cash expense built up in the retained earnings of the company. So we will add all of that back to the retained earnings, which is adding back to the capital employed. This is by far the trickiest bit in this question. And remember, you only need 50% to pass. These EVA questions tend to have one really tricky little bit in it. When you encounter the one little tricky piece, don't freak out and panic. Do your best. Keep it moving. Even if you got this part 100% wrong, you did everything else well, you're going to find more than 50 marks. 50% 50 of the marks. So if we come back to our spreadsheet, that will be equal to 4.5 minus 2. We can use that sum function once again, equals the sum, grab the range above it. Let us underline the line above to show the user that we have now have, we have a total below. And we've got our three workings. Let's now finish this up. No pat is equal to cell B19. So we can just click on that. And weighted average cost of capital multiplied by the capital employed will be equal to the WAC, which we calculated here multiplied by cell E8. I'm going to set that negative just so it matches Okay, how we do it on paper. Look at that. And EVA will then be equal to the difference. And we can now use the sum function as we made the capital charge negative. 
and look at that, negative 5.58. And things are looking a little messy right now, so maybe I will employ a little bit of light formatting. There are no marks for formatting, but it'll be easier on my eye, it'll be easier on the marker's eye, it'll be professional, it'll take me just a couple of moments, several seconds to do this, so why not? I'm going to grab, I'll grab this, come to my formatting, I will set it equal to my standard setting with a thousand separator and a decimal place to two places. Let's throw down an underline so there's no misunderstanding that EVA is the net amount. Look at the beautiful work, everybody. My workings are looking fabulous here. Notice that the order of my work does not have to go linear from top to bottom. Take things in order of easy marks first. Also notice that a spreadsheet solution does not look like a paper solution that you might see in the back of the model answers of the old questions. Guys, that is the negative 559 that you would bring into the word processing tool so you could write up a quick essay and answer that requirement about evaluating EVA. Coming back to the question, and this is very important, the verb is not calculate, the verb is evaluate, which means we will now need to interpret the results of our spreadsheet work. How are we going to do this? Well, here we need to use the practice platform again. So I've opened up the word processor, and this is one of the really big differences between the applied skills and the strategic professional. Get in the habit of this. You did your math in the spreadsheet tool. Now bring your result back into the word processor and evaluate. If we look at the past exams, we saw that there were three marks available for the write-up to this. So that means we should give several very short paragraphs, okay, to, to get at least two out of the three marks. I'm going to use plain, simple English, short sentences, trying to link to the story however possible. EVA is negative 5.59 million. Please see the spreadsheet. This shows that shareholder value is eroding. Yes, Stillwater is profitable on their P&L. This is in accounting terms. But if this profit is expressed in economic terms, i.e. adjusted for non-cash, tax paid, and other items, we see that economic profits do not meet the minimum required return of the capital providers. Stillwater can improve the situation with operational decisions, for example, growing the revenue of the unregulated di division, or with financial management decisions, for example, reducing the company's cost of capital by changing their gearing. APM friends, I hope this video has shown some light on this difficult topic for you. I took you through the basics. We went through a past exam question, and we just ended up with the writing skills. If you did find the video helpful, feel free to throw down a like right now, recommend it to your friends. That will help me out. Guys, this is Steve Willis signing out for now. Good luck on your upcoming APM exam.